Merry Christmas and welcome to this service at City of Hope. Kindly use our mother's room for your convenience. Please note, Bible school and counseling school registrations are open, so contact the church office for more information. Registrations have been extended, so book now for the Israel and Egypt tour. Our New Year's service are as follows. New Year's Eve service at 6 p.m. New Year's Day service at 9.30 a.m. Just sit back and open up your heart to receive another life-changing message. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over the flock at night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood near them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. And so the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly army of angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among people with whom he is pleased. When the angels had departed from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came in a hurry as they found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen him, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who had heard it were amazed about the things which were told them by the shepherds. I want to share this morning a message, and a very simple message on this Christmas morning. And it's really a question. The question is this, how good is our news? Come on, turn to your neighbor and ask him or her and say, kind of eyeball them and say, how good is your news? Because that's really the question of Christmas, you know. The angel said to, to, to Mary, uh, and to the shepherds, I'm, I'm bringing the Savior, and it's good news. I'm, I'm here to announce good news that will bring great joy. And I checked the Greek of the word great. It means mega. He says, I'm giving you news that's going to release mega joy on earth. And the news that we have, the question I'm asking myself is, how much joy does our news release? Because I don't know about you, I'm, I'm kind of, I've, I've kind of had enough bad news. I mean, how many of you know that we, we hear bad news all the time? I was opening my phone yesterday and I nearly had some kind of an attack, you know. I opened it and it said, Mammoth petrol or fuel price hikes for South Africans. And I'm thinking, not another one. Jesus, help us, please. <laughs> I really, I, I was like... <laughs> and then when I opened it, it was just a reflection on the year of how the prices has increased. But, but we become so accustomed to bad news... We kind of expect bad news. And when we had COVID three years ago, and that was really terrible news, and with that came lockdown, and with that came econ news of economic recession and all sorts of things. I, I remember we, we were just blessed to have a wonderful holiday down in KZN, and thank you to Pastor Andre and Des, who stood in for us and, and afforded us this play, break together with our leadership. But, but we've been trying to have this holiday for the last three years. So the first time we planned it, it was lockdown. The second time we planned it, there was riots in KZN. And we were on our way traveling there. We had to turn around and come back home and cancel the holiday. The third time we tried to go, the truckers blocked the way all the way there. And then we went over a, a, a dirt mountain pass next to Van Rien and down the hill we got there. Just to all of us being infected with COVID and being down for two weeks there. Not even wanting to put our foot in the water so sick we were. And so at long last, we had our holiday. In our infinite wisdom, we, we, we designed our own uh, our, our, our trailer. We designed an extra tent to it where Tink and I would sleep. And we had it made here in a factory. And in our infinite wisdom, we decided to go and test it at the coast. And we had 300 millimeters of rain in the course of two days. Uh, there was water coming through every hole that you can think. And I was ready to tell Katinka, oh, that's it. Tomorrow morning, we're turning around. We're going back to Kimberley. I'm sick and tired of this. And praise God, we pushed through and we had a lovely two weeks after that. 
But how many of you are sick and tired of bad news? Come on, Alvi. How many of you are sick and tired But we, we, we become so sensitized by the bad news we hear. Listen to this. That we actually expect bad news to come. We, we're expecting the worst oftentimes. Not only that, when somebody happens to give us good news, we don't believe them. When somebody shares a testimony of the goodness of God or something good that's happening, we have a question. We said, but, but wait a minute, there must be a catch in it. Have you read the small print? You know, this must be a scheme or a scam or something of that sort. Can't be that good. But this morning I've got this question to you, and that is, how good is our news? Come on, are, are we the kind of people that just kind of reinforce the bad news? Because bad news, bad news is full up. Bad news is, there's, there's, there's a lot of it going around. But when the angel spoke to the, to the shepherd, he said, I'm going to give you good news that's going to release mega joy in your hearts. Wow. And God is saying, as he said to the shepherds, he said, don't fear, I've got good news. God is saying to each one of you that maybe battled some form of anxiety or fear, maybe you've got some fear over finances, you've got some fear over uncertain future, over your children, what school they're going to get into next year, what varsity they're going to go to. God is saying, don't fear, because I'm speaking a word of good news over you that's going to release mega joy into your hearts. It's the joy of my kingdom. It's the joy of my throne. Now, I don't know about you, but I find that there's some people in life that tends to make you sad. Do you have some people in your life? They break your heart. You love them. You care for them. You reach out to them. You give to them. And they'll tell you to leer. They dis- have you been disappointed by people? Come on. Can you think of somebody that made you sad? Okay. And then there are other people. They just downright make you mad. You're like, <laughs> like that taxi driver that cuts you in front of you. You want to give him a fivefold ministry, right? And then there are others that make you glad. But you know, the good news is really the good news about a person that makes us glad. Remember this old chorus that's that ring like this, it said, He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice, for He has made me glad. Jesus, the good news is about a person called Jesus Christ that came to make us glad. And in all the sadness and all the madness and in all the sad and bad news of this world, Jesus says, I come to give you good news. So maybe just turn to that neighbor again and say, How good is your news? You see, because as I, as I preached a couple of weeks ago, the, the kingdom of God is all about joy. The highest level of our Father's kingdom is joy. He says, I've come to give righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's my kingdom. God's kingdom is all about joy. I remember worshiping God at a conference a couple of years ago. And as I was worshiping, God spoke to me. It's almost like an audible voice. And he said, son... If the kingdom you are serving or building, if the net result of that is not joy, you must question the kingdom that you're building or serving. Because if you're building my kingdom, the net result will be joy. How many of you know that it's not just all joy? It's not the motto source, right? Like all gold. It's not all joy, okay? But sometimes... When you seek the kingdom, you go through persecution and, and, and you go through trials. How many of you have gone through some other trial this year? Some other, other difficulty, some other challenge? Okay, we've gone. But the net result of God's kingdom is more joy. Come on, if you go through a, a, a trial in your marriage and, 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 and God begins to speak to you about treating your husband or your wife better and treating them with honor and respect and, and you repent and align to the king's way of doing things. How many of you know that there will be more joy in your marriage? But as you go through the trial, there might not be a lot of joy. The same with our finances. Maybe your finances is not an area of joy in your life. 
And then you learn the truth about tithing and you learn the truth about stewarding your finances God's way. And as you align to the king's way of doing things, what happens? It releases more joy. The net result of God's kingdom is always going to be more joy. So how good is our news? And so just a few thoughts on, on this joy that we receive with Jesus. And I shared at length last night on this, uh, this first point, I'm just going to mention Joy comes when Jesus is our Savior, our Lord, and our Christ. The angel said that the good news is that the Savior is born. He will be Lord and he will be Christ. You see, Jesus wants to be your Savior. How many of you have given your life to Jesus and you are saved? Come on. You've prayed the sinner's prayer. You say, Jesus, come and save me of my sin. You've done that. So you're saved, right? The Bible says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord might be saved. What does it say? Will be saved saved. But I find that it's not only just a once-off salvation, it's kind of a salvation that needs to happen ever so often. Yes, once off I give my life to Jesus and I'm going to heaven, but I need to save, I need Jesus to save me ever so often out of the things that I do and the the, 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 the situations that I find myself in. And whenever you call on the name of the Lord, He will save you. Again and again and again because he's a savior and so how do we respond to him as savior we call on him how do we respond to him as lord we surrender to him and how do we respond to him as messiahs or as christ we make him the center of our lives i mentioned this last night that oftentimes jesus is not the center of our lives oftentimes we become the center of our lives in other words, our, our life does not revolve around Jesus. We, we're not continually thinking, what will make him happy? We're all the while thinking, what will make me happy? I think if I as a pastor sometimes battle with this, then, then maybe some of you are also battling with that. But I also find this, that the more I focus on myself and making me happy, the more miserable my life becomes. I'm going to preach to this side of the congregation because <laughs> I'm getting some response from this side here. Somebody once said, a man wrapped up in himself becomes a very small package. Don't look at your neighbor right now, okay? Not good timing. Okay? But a person wrapped up in himself, in his own needs, in his own happiness, becomes a very small package. Sometimes couples sit in front of us, they say, no, they want to get a divorce, and I Ask them, why do you want to divorce him? Or why do you want to divorce him? And the answer is, he does not make me happy anymore. Or she does not make me happy anymore. I think the news flash is that God did not send him or her to make you happy, but actually to make you holy. God has used marriage to make us holy. And, 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 and so oftentimes we... We want to make ourselves the center of our life and the center of our happiness. But true happiness really lies in that I make Jesus the center. That my life revolves around Him. Because He is the Messiah. He is the Christ. He is the center. So turn to your neighbor and ask him or say, how good is your news? Does it bring great joy in your life? The second thought I'm leaving with you this morning is joy comes when we discover God's opinion. The angel spoke about glory to God in the highest heaven. And I don't know about you, I've always thought, what does glory mean? Growing up in church, I'm like, glory, what does it mean, you know? My grandmother, to be honest, as a kid, this is what I thought glory meant. And it's a bit funny, but I grew up in a very traditional church where my grandmother used to wear these big hats. And she was in, in, in the, on the South African board of flower arranging, you know, she would and she would have all these flower arrangements on her hat. And I always thought the glory of God must be something like that big hat that grandma's wearing, okay? But the glory of God is the greatness of God and the grandeur of God. But I discovered something else, that the Greek word for glory means doxa. So the Greek word is doxa. And it means, you know what it means? It means the opinion of God. It means the opinion of God. And I've learned this one thing, that each of us live by someone's opinions. Every day when we wake up, how we act, how we move about, what we do, how we think, is, 
is, is, is influenced by somebody's opinion. And back in the garden when Adam and Eve lived, they were covered in the glory of God. Remember, they, 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 they were naked and unashamed, right? And the reason they could be not ashamed of their nakedness was they were covered with the glory of God. What were they covered with, Albie? They were covered with the opinion of God. And as long as they were covered with the opinion of God, their hearts were full of joy. Come on, they didn't look at themselves and say, oh, I'm a little, little bit flabby here on the side, or something is too much here and too little there. They had the opinion of God that governed their life. Until one day, when Adam and Eve decided they're going to exchange the opinion of God for the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for human opinion. And that was a very, very sad day. Because that day, sadness came instead of gladness. Sorrow came instead of joy. And I wonder this morning, whose opinion do you and I live by? Come on, because the opinion that we will live by, <clears throat> that each of us live by, will either increase our joy or decrease our joy. So I'm thinking, the opinion that you live by, that you woke up by this morning, did it increase your joy or decrease your joy? Because if it's God's opinion, it's going to increase your joy. But if it's any other opinion that's not aligned to God's opinion, it's going to decrease your joy. And maybe this morning, we need to change the opinion by which we live. Do you know what the word amen means? Who can help me? Amen means, be it so. But somebody once explained it so beautiful to me, so one, one, one theologian, he said, amen literally means I exchange my opinion for God's opinion. So when you hear the word, when the opinion of God is preached over your life, what happens when you say amen and you really mean it out of your heart? You say, I agree with this. You are saying, I am exchanging my opinion for my father's opinion. I'm exchanging this negative human opinion for God's opinion. And God's opinion released tremendous joy into these shepherds because suddenly they realize that they were worth being saved, that they were worth being redeemed by the Savior that was sent to them. And so the opinion by which we live, the glory of God, releases joy. The next thing, joy comes when there's peace on earth and peace with heaven. I want to repeat that. Joy comes when there's peace on earth and peace with heaven. What does it mean? Peace on earth. Just ask any parent. All you really want for Christmas is not me or you, like the song says. All I want for Christmas is peace. As parents, all you really want for Christmas is one hour of peace. Can you just not fight or strive with one another for one hour, please. And so joy comes when there's peace on earth. But joy also comes when I've got peace with heaven. And you see, when there's opinions that I live by that's not of God, I'm going to find it hard to have peace with heaven. Peace with heaven comes when I align with heaven's opinion over my finances, with heaven's opinion over myself, over my marriage, my children, my work situation. When I align with God's opinions, then peace comes with heaven, but that also releases peace on earth. And then the next thought is this, that joy comes when we participate with what God is doing. You know, I, I quoted it last night. I thought it was John Maxwell but he wasn't the first one that said it. But somebody once said this, there are three kinds of people in life. The first kind of people are the people who make things happen. Come on, are there any go-getters here that make things happen? Come on, just, just wave at me. Don't be shy. You know who you are. You make things happen. Jylle laat die dinge gebeur. Wie is dit? Oh, there we are. First kind of people are those who make things happen. Second kind of people are those who watch things happen. Okay, that's good. They're spectator. The third kind of people are those who wonder what is happening. <laughs> These shepherds, they said, we just don't want to wonder what is happening. We want to become part 
of what is happening. And the Bible says they were watching not only their flock, but they were watching the, the signs of, of nature. Is it going to rain? Is it a westerly wind or an easterly wind? Do we need to lead our sheep, our flock, to safety because of rain? They were watching the whole time. And because they were watching, they encountered God in a way that changed not only their lives, but changed history forever. And the moment that the angel spoke to them and gave the promise of this good news that will release mega joy, you know what they did? They didn't say, oh, that's nice. Thank you for telling us. They said, let us go at once. Let us go quickly. They said, let us go straight to Bethlehem and see this thing for ourselves. They said, we, we don't want any distractions in the way. We don't want to get sidetracked on our journey. But we want to see God for ourselves. We want to encounter God for ourselves. You see, mega joy comes when we participate with what God is doing. How many of you watched the, the, the FIFA World Cup final a couple of days ago? Okay, that was one of the greatest sports shows that was ever presented. Okay. Now, how many of you know there was about 30-odd players that participated in the game. They made it happen. Then there was a few billion people that watched things happen. And the rest of us wondered what was happening, okay? <laughs> but I don't want to be that kind of person that wonder what's happening. I either want to watch what happens, but actually more than that, I want to participate in what is happening. And God is inviting each of us. He say, would you participate in what I'm doing? Come on, let's take a cue out of the shepherd's book and say, we're going to rush. Whenever God is moving, whenever the, we've got a hint that God is doing something, we're going to rush straight away there. We're not going to be distracted. We're going to rush to what God is doing. It says there, they hurried to the place and found the baby Jesus. They didn't walk like Sudeisi. Let's check if we can find, you know, let, let God's water or God's akker vloe. That's not what they said. There was an urgency about participating with God. They rushed quickly. We don't want to miss the encounter. We don't want to miss Jesus. You see, joy comes when we participate with what God is doing in our midst. Joy doesn't come when we make God and the things of God a side issue in our life. Joy comes when serving God becomes the core issue of our life. When we participate in, in history, in His story, and there's urgency in our hearts. And I wonder if I can stir a little bit of FOMO up here. Do you know what FOMO is? I don't know if all the more mature people know what FOMO is, but the kids know what, what's FOMO. Who can help me? Fear of missing out. Don't give them Bobby, Eviet, and Eddie. Fear of missing out is FOMO. We need to have a bit of FOMO when it comes to the things of God. One thing I, I so appreciate about Pastor Andre and Des is, although they're on semi-retirement and they're not here always, they always want to be involved with what God is doing. True or not? One thing I appreciate about Uncle Bobby and, 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 and um, <coughs> excuse me, Oslana Gablan, Joy, Joan, Joan, sorry. It's like when you pray for somebody and the name is gone, you know, suddenly. But, but they, they've got FOMO about the things of God. They don't want to miss out. Last night, somebody sent them a message incorrectly saying the service starts at 6.30. So luckily they arrived early for that service, but late for the first one. And they were so distraught that they missed the first 10 minutes of worship because they've got FOMO, they've got fear of missing out on the things of God. And turn to your neighbor and say, you better develop a bit of FOMO about the things of God. The final thing that I find this shepherd's doing is joy came when they promoted what God was doing. They started telling other people about Jesus. They were the first preachers of the good news, apart from the angels, and they started proclaiming this good news that brings great joy. And it says all the people that they told it to were amazed. Joy was spreading. And you know what God has called us as a church, as a people, to wherever we go in this town, and even if you're not from Kimberley and you're just visiting, go back to your town and your places and spread the good news of great joy about Jesus wherever you go. Come on, God has made us and called us to be a witness unto Him. And just a quick tip, you ask me, how do I share a testimony? How do I preach at somebody? Just three cues. Keep it short when you share with somebody. Don't preach at them a long sermon. Number two, keep it simple. 
Don't use theological words and righteousness and justification by faith. And just keep it simple. Short, simple. And number three, keep it real. People want to know what happened in your life because people live in a real world and they're looking for a real God that they can encounter in a real world <clears throat> because Jesus is real. 2,000 years ago, he stepped as a baby into a real world, lived a real life for 30 years. Then he started a real ministry touching people's life, saving real sinners like you and I. And then he died on a real wooden cross. And real blood spilled so that you and I can have a real relationship with Jesus. But more than that, so that you and I can have a real witness, a testimony out there to share the good news. And I want to encourage you before this new year starts, why don't you find somebody if you go shopping at work or if you're not working with your family, find somebody and share a testimony of a real God, the goodness of a real God with somebody else. I promise you, their hearts will be filled with joy about the goodness of God. Amen. This morning, I want to give an opportunity. Anybody is sitting here and you're saying, Pastor Jan, I can't say with all my heart that I made Jesus Lord and Savior of my life. I don't know if I go out on this Christmas day, this 25th of December 2022, if I walk out of here and something, God forbid, happens to my life. I don't know if I would be heading to heaven. But this morning I heard the word and the Holy Spirit tugged on my heart. And I want to give my life. I need to give my life. I need to make Jesus my Lord and my Savior. I need to make right with God. I need to find peace with heaven. So that that peace can translate into peace on earth. And if that's you, I want to offer a prayer of salvation as we just close our eyes and just pray this prayer after me. Say, thank you, Father, for the good news of the gospel that Jesus was sent to release mega joy into my heart and to my home. And so, Lord Jesus, today I declare that you are my Savior. And I ask, would you come and save me again and again and again in Jesus' name. Also, Jesus, I declare that you alone are my Lord. And I surrender my life to you. Forgive me, Lord, for running my own life my own way. But I need you to be in charge. And Jesus, today I confess you to be my Christ, my Messiah, the center of my life. And forgive me for making my life all about me, all about my happiness, because that has made me miserable. But today, Jesus, I make you the center. Let my life revolve around you and you alone because you alone has made me glad in jesus name amen and amen wow what a powerful prayer can we give god a praise offering